All right, now that this is poured up, we're gonna demold it. When we poured it up and we stacked it up, the reason we did that was to get ahead of time to where we could actually get it to where we could work off the tray. And when you do this, work over your bench. You don't want this thing hitting the floor because this may be the only pour you're gonna get. So you wanna treat it with all due respect. So you wanna put it in, feel the cast, and then with a, with a fulcrum against the tray, give a little tug. It also has to come off the same way it came off in the came out of the mouth. So when you start seeing the lower part, just come right off the back of the cast, and there you go. Downstairs, you'll need three pours: one for a master cast, two for solid cast, sent to the lab. Now we're going to trim this. Best way to trim this. For one, and when you're in the when you're in the support lab, you have to wear safety glasses. This needs to be the puzzle plane needs to be parallel to the countertop. So if this is not absolutely flat, use your teeth as your plane of occlusion. Hold it up, and we're going to cleat the back. We're going to make it flat so it's perpendicular to the plane of occlusion. So now it can actually sit up flat. So now all I have to do is use the cleats as my guide to then grind the back of the cast. And as the wheel turns, it's pulling it down to the table, so I'm getting more support. So with my fingers, I just guide it. This really helps to get your cast nice and flat, so when you do anterior work, it doesn't create an optical illusion from the mount and from the inside of the ledge. Since it's an upper, we're going to take into consideration the border here. And most of the time, with the steepness of, of the vestibule, you got to watch the anteriors of the teeth so they don't hit the blade. And you're looking at here, you're not watching your teeth, and you grind your teeth. So if you want this off, you're going to have to taper the model a little bit. We're just going to do a gross uh, elimination of the material and then we're going to finish it on an arbor band. One thing that will help also is once you wet your cast, here at Nova we use resin rock for our final impressions, for our final uh, pour. It doesn't hydrate as fast, so if you wet it and then you can blow it off, it actually keeps it dry enough that you can introduce pins without having to wait for a half hour for it to, for it to dry. There you go. Now we're going to go to the lathe and use an arbor band. This is your arbor band. You probably saw a video earlier with Maria showing you how to put it on. It's in your D1 kit, find it. It's a real help now and when you get down to the final clinic in your third and fourth year. It goes in here. This is a quick chuck. Turn it on high speed. This is gonna put on the vacuum also. This is just for light. This is light and vacuum. You want it here and you want 3,000 RPMs and you want to be wearing a mask and also safety glasses. Put the teeth in your hand so if it kicks, It'll actually kick the teeth in your hand and not kick it against the machine this way. This is <clears throat> kind of intimidating at times, but if you'll just touch it at about 6 o'clock or 6.30 on the bottom, you'll realize that this is the cutting surface and this is where it's controlled. One thing that's a good measure is don't over trim the width of your finger. If you trim too narrow, when you pin it, it's gonna split the cast. If it's too wide, you're gonna have a wide area to saw out and, and rough trim your model. So try to keep it the width of your finger.
then we're going to put a taper back here so it actually doesn't get locked into the base. So once you get that, turn it sideways, create the taper, and just for good measure, come all the way around. Note to self, this should be the last time your cast is actually wet. Everything from now on should be from a dry cast so that when you're manipulating the, the model work, you can still use your lathe and it doesn't gum up anything that you've been working on with a burr or an arbor band.